Thank you, thank you. So last June, uh, over 100 people found themselves stuck in their cars in the middle of a muddy field outside Denver. Now the only thing these people had in common was that they were all using Google Maps that morning. You see, there was a, an accident on the highway and Google Maps, as it does, provided an alternate route for users in the area. But the algorithm chose to use a private dirt road as the detour and well, it had rained in Denver. So instead of saving 15 minutes, everyone ended up like this. I share this story simply to illustrate how we inherently trust the technology we use every day, especially when that technology makes our lives a little bit easier or saves us a little more time. You see, our future is not this sci-fi robotic dystopia that we often see in the media. The truth is we use autonomous systems every single day. We just don't realize it until they mess up. And that's the design thesis of automation. Don't focus on the technology, you focus on the experience, on the service being delivered. See, autonomy is already here. We just don't see it and because it's designed so we don't have to. I can push a button and in two minutes there will be a car outside this theater ready to take me wherever it is I need to go. Do I care about how that car got here? The technology going on behind the scenes to enable that transaction? Not really. I care about where I'm going. I care about my destination. And let's not forget that I am voluntarily getting into the car of a complete stranger. So it's this trust, it's this relationship with technology that's only going to grow. The systems will get better, the technology will get smarter, but our relationship will evolve. I got into drones in 2014 really by accident. I was working at Penn State University at the time with some very smart people, building tools to solve problems with teaching and learning. You see, students were more worried about the technology than they were their own coursework. And we thought, well, technology should enable learning and support it, not distract from it. So we wanted to build tools that combined simplicity so that students were able to focus on what truly mattered, the teaching and learning objectives. And at the time, Drones were an ideal candidate for this type of design thinking. Right, they were relatively new to the commercial space. Uh, they weren't yet proven, but the potential was there. So a few of us started a small company to explore this idea further. You see, at the time, drones were almost a threatening technology, right? hard to use, uh, difficult, and they used controllers and interfaces that looked like this. So we wanted to change this. We wanted to go from tools like this to employing simplicity and design to something like this. Or I just draw on a map with my finger and the drone flies where I drew. Right, can we marry good design with automation to provide the best experience possible? Because we often think that the more advanced the technology is, the more difficult it is to use. When in fact with automation, uh, the more simplified it is, the easier it is. And this work continues today uh, where we're using drones to inspect high efficiency energy grid infrastructures like wind turbines and solar farms. Processes that took humans hours and days and use of helicopters now takes minutes. It's quicker, it's much safer, and the data is better. But other use cases are happening too. This is a company called Zipline. They use drones to deliver medications and vaccines to areas of Africa and around the world that otherwise wouldn't be able to access it at all. So you can start to see how these use cases will grow over time. The FAA, for example, just two weeks ago announced approval of the first ever drone airline in the United States. So as the, powered by UPS. So as the technology evolves and the regulations grow to match it, we'll start to see autonomy fold itself more and more into our daily lives. Some of it we won't even notice. Others, we might. Speaking of which, does anybody shop at Giant? All right, all right. Well, those of you watching from home, Giant is a regional grocery store, also called Martin's in neighboring states. And if you've shopped at Giant, you've probably met Marty. Marty is an autonomous service robot that, well, he lives at Giant. It can do a few things. It can scour the floors looking for spills. 
It has an eight camera array that can scan shelving units looking for product that's out of stock. It can scan barcodes to compare the sale price with the price in the system. Right? It works with employees to take care of routine tasks so that they can focus on the bigger problems. But as a designer, Marty has another advantage to me, and that's in user research. Because we get to see firsthand what it's like when a robot is inserted into a routine that hasn't changed for us in many, many years. Adults are more of like awkward avoidance with Marty. Kids, though, kids are different. Kids love Marty. Marty is a mascot. So, and this is an interesting thought because to our kids, going to grocery shopping with a robot is normal life. That's pretty powerful. So the idea of drones delivering packages or cars driving themselves isn't really out of the ordinary. But robots assisting employees isn't, isn't all that new. We just haven't seen it on our side as consumers. But when I click that buy now button, right, that ignites a chain of events that involves robotics, AI, logistics, all working in concert to make sure that book I want arrives tomorrow instead of Tuesday. But as these technologies evolve, there will be glitches, right? There will be cars stuck in muddy fields, so to speak. But that's where automation can play a role too. Consider this, what if you were to get in a car into a car accident with another car that has no humans in it? What role do you play in that scenario? What responsibilities do you have? Well, it turns out the self-driving car has a lot more data at its disposal than you do. 360 video, road conditions, sensor data, that it can use in combination when given certain triggers to make decisions. So that the car itself has contacted emergency services and given them all the information they need even before you realize what happened. In our lifetime, we have introduced some of the most transformative technologies in human history. From PCs to the internet, we have been focused on making our lives simpler, information sharing wider, and problem solving faster. Autonomy is the next step in that progression. And we have some big problems ahead of us. But when we design with intent and compassion, autonomy is not the cause of chaos, but rather it is a design tool that can be used to prevent it. Thank you all so much. <laughs>